Huh. I am looking exceptionally disheveled today. Um, <laughs> so, for those of you who were there for my birthday rant, uh, I, I expected it to get, like, downvoted to fuck, because I was basically just complaining. I mean, I offered solutions, but... I was basically just complaining and uh, saying that, you know, like, hey, if you want me to to be visible, you got to put me out there. And uh, a few people did that. And I'm now up to a higher number of subs. I, I'm, it wasn't like a massive spike or anything. But, like, I went from the 36 I was at to 46, so... Ten people who, I guess, normally watch my videos but didn't sub yet um, are now subbed. So that's nice. Uh, welcome to the party. The <laughs> most negative party that you'll probably ever go to. I, I fucking... Even on my birthday, when I had my call with my mother, I still had to make everything fucking political. I got... I don't know. It, I vacillate. I vacillate between thinking that that's overborn and people don't like it. Um, and thinking that, yeah, you know what? It doesn't matter if people don't like it. It's still the truth. And there are still lives on the line. So maybe I shouldn't give a shit. I don't fucking know. But my, you know, my point in bringing up making things political is... That, uh, I think today's rant is gonna be about fucking Star Wars. Like, lean back like I'm talking to a therapist. Because Star Wars, I used to like it when I was a kid. Right? I used to think Star Wars was great because it had pew-pew robots and fucking gunfights and fucking lightsabers and it was cool. Right? And that's the reason a lot of people like it, but a reason a significant amount of people like it is because of the statements it makes, the philosophy it has, the ideas it puts out there, and God, are those awful. I, I tweeted something out today that, you know, it got some negative feedback, but the vast majority of the people were, like, actually trying to engage with it. So, I've got a good crop of people on my on my my profile, you know? A good crop of people following me at Jeremiah EXE until this rickety boat goes under just like the previous one did. And uh, I got reasonable responses to it, some of which merit further exploration. But, like... I stand by my fucking tweet because my tweet is just like the tip of a very nasty iceberg of things I have to say about the Star Wars franchise because the Star Wars franchise has shitty ethics. Absolute dog shit. Its philosophy is not good. It's very bad. And it's bad for people to act as though it, it's good. Um, so let me read my, my tweet about the subject, uh, that, that, like, I think sort of typifies what, what the rest of my criticism is. Yoda's a real piece of shit. Fear, anger, and hatred are all normal emotions, and it's totally okay to feel them in many circumstances. They're also part of the grieving process. Imagine telling someone in grief that they're only a few steps away from pure evil. What a fuck that loser. You know, so... I stand by that. It's still true. I don't like Yoda. I don't like Yoda, and I don't like the people who come out of Yoda. Uh, because... Remember something. And this is very important. Star Wars is fiction. Um, and in fiction, you can get away with writing whatever you want as long as your characters can succeed by your direction rather than any choices that real people could make to come to the same conclusion 
and be equally as safe or victorious. And, by the way, okay, I had a question the other day. I don't script this shit. I'm just sort of fucking, uh, talk to anybody who's talked to me off camera, and they'll tell you that this is basically just how I talk. Uh, I don't know. The, the idea of just monologuing like this apparently isn't how a lot of people talk. Um, and, and apparently it was weird when it was done, like, view askew movies, like the Jay and Silent Bob stuff and the Clerk stuff, but I like it because I'm just sort of saying things. That's the reason I kind of want to do these in one take, rather than take back little mistakes, because it seems, like, more organic, more like I'm just talking to y'all. Um, which reminds me, don't forget to check the stream tomorrow, uh, evening-ish. Um, I will be answering your comments, but basically it's fiction so they can write in a victory, even if it wouldn't happen in real life, even if in real life that victory is not going to happen, they can write it in, you know, and that means that they can have whatever they want happen. They can have the heroes do whatever they want and still like still be victorious, right? They can have them follow utterly shitty advice written by actual human writers who didn't write with any level of wisdom that they thought they did. Because this is written by, you know, normal people <laughs> from normal, normal Stan. And like, the, the whole point of me saying this is Yoda is supposed to be like this old wizened character. He's shriveled up like a fucking grape. We're, we're all supposed to be in awe of the fact that this creature has lasted this long. And you know what? That used to be good, you know? Elders used to really earn their place among the stars, right? <laughs> Proverbially speaking. They, they, they really had to work tooth and nail to get to their old age without dying, without being eaten, without being killed by another human being, without fucking uh, dying of a disease, uh, without falling off something large, without being crushed by something large. Like, it used to be, when things were more difficult, that being an elder fucking meant more but that's the reason people don't like boomers is because a lot of these people are acting like elders already and not all of them but a lot of them are responsible for why shit sucks and they had a relatively easy life not all of them not saying all of them but like social security is a ponzi scheme the fact that people have to pay into Social Security um, when they're probably not going to be able to cash out because it's a fundamentally bankrupt institution which requires constant bailouts, uh, that's a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> and people know it and people resent it because Social Security was these people's security blanket, but it didn't do fucking much for the rest of us because we didn't have it yet. And it's not like... You know, we can go back in time and retcon that from the plot. This isn't fiction. You know, they had all these government programs, all this subsidy, all these <laughs> self-confirming things that eventually turned out to be bullshit. Um, the subprime mortgage crisis was arguably orchestrated by boomers who were, like, financial industry oldies and, like wanted to make a shit ton of cash off poor people um inflation to bail out all the stuff they like uh to to give their government programs the funding they need because these government programs are government programs and uh the market wouldn't bear them out <laughs> military spending huge huge has been absolutely gold-plated as long as i can remember and for longer than i've been alive the reason people hate boomers is because they have all these 
fucking things that they could rely on that we're ending up paying for, and then they call us lazy and entitled. It's fucking hilarious. They crashed the economy so much. They've put us in so much debt. And now when a baby is born, it owes like, according to the U.S. government, it will owe by the time it's an adult like two, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000, something like that. <laughs> it's fucked. That's why people hate boomers. That's why the OK Boomer meme exists, because they're mocking millennials and, and Gen Z all the time. Primarily millennials, though, uh, which is funny because a lot of the people they're calling millennials are Gen Z, and they just don't know fucking shit about anything. And keep in mind, all these generations are bullshit to begin with, but they made them, so we might as well use them. Um, the point I'm trying to make here is that Yoda is not written by old people. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't. Uh, he was written by, like, middle-aged people who had benefited strongly from the kinds of policies that let them make, frankly, unrealistic fiction like this. There's a reason the stormtroopers fire their guns and don't hit a damn thing. Because the point is that they're creating an artificial sense of danger to take you on this stupid roller coaster ride through the movie. Like, I've got so many fucking gripes with Star Wars, but I think one of the primary ones traces back to my boomer comments here is that Yoda doesn't actually know shit, and neither do the rest of the good guys. So, the Jedi Code, you know... <laughs> the thing where he says, you know, only Sith deal in absolutes, which is in and its in and of itself an absolute statement. You know, there is no try. There is try. Fuck you, piece of shit. You know, fear if fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, hate leads to the dark side. No. Fuck you. It leads to having the determination to destroy what destroys you. Hating the state is perfectly acceptable. Hating the powers that should not be is perfectly acceptable. Hating your rapist is perfectly acceptable, even if you're male. Hating your domestic violence partner is perfectly acceptable, even if you're male. And, and trying to train people to not hate is stupid. There are so many valid and sound things to hate. Feel free to do that, right? Don't hate people based on their race or other innate characteristics. That's pretty unepic. But feel free to fucking hate government. Yeah. Feel free to fucking pile on and hate the tax man if you want. Feel free to hate the war criminals. Feel free to hate the intelligence industrial complex that still spies on you illegally. There's so much to hate. And it's reasonable to hate all those things. It's reasonable to be angry with the system, with the way things are. The Empire in, in Star Wars could have been so much better defeated if people had just gotten mad earlier and fucked them up before they got that much power, before they raised the clone army. It, it, it's so... F and fear? Fear is one of the evolutionary drivers that made sure that we could still be here all this time later into our fucking lineage. You see where I'm coming from? So, to claim that you can't feel all these, quote, negative emotions because you're gonna be a Sith? That's nothing but dogmatic religious peer pressure bullshit. There's no reason to support it. There's no reason to support the Jedi over the Sith. From... A purely philosophical standpoint. Um, <laughs> I mean, from from the standpoint of the movie, sure. I'm not a big fan of like blowing up planets, enslaving people, trusting the worst of the worst. But you don't have to do that if you're angry. You can be angry. You can be fearful. You can be hateful, and have all of those be based in perfectly rational terms, and things that anyone would agree are totally reasonable you can have it based in that it's possible 
And the fact that Star Wars wants you to think it's not, it's because they're selling you a bullshit binary. It's a bullshit binary. That's all they're selling you, you know? They want to be able to market different sides of the equation so that you can choose a side, you know? They want you to sympathize with Yoda while he gives truly fucking awful and anti-inspirational advice, you know? There is no try. There is no effort. If you if you didn't finish the job, you didn't do a damn thing. It's a binary. There's no learning. There's no growing. There's no improving. There's no fucking nothing. You just do it or you don't do it, you piece of scum. It's It sucks. Star Wars sucks and I'm not even scratching the surface of how much it sucks like I could go into this for so fucking long and Yoda somehow gets all this popularity why because he's old well tons of people are old that doesn't mean that they know what they're talking about there are plenty of old people who are wrong there are plenty of young people who are wrong address people individually not, like on their merits and don't be blinded by superficial differences like that especially since you know if they were a real elder who really had to go through that I would definitely take what they were saying more seriously it's a fucking fictional thing you know Yoda never actually went through any of the stuff that, that Yoda went through in the fucking fiction Yoda doesn't exist. So they can write him to be very smart, even though what he's saying is fucking shit. Um, you know, it's like people don't want to talk to their older family for, for a decent chunk of the part. Not because uh, they, like, hate old people or whatever. It's because, like, a lot of old people in the modern day didn't get there by the sweat of their brow. They got there because the government decided, hey, we're going to splurge a bunch. Like, I'm, again, not saying all. I know a lot of wise senior citizens here, you know? And conversely, I know a lot of dumb fucking kids. I know a lot of dumb fucking young adults, a lot of dumb fucking middle-aged people, Right? I'm not saying any class is perfect. What I'm saying is that because somebody's old doesn't necessarily mean they're right, and doubly so if they're a fictional old person written by young people who give shitty life advice. That's why I like Sonic. And I won't go into this too much. But Sonic, it's a series that admits that Sonic isn't always right that there aren't just two sides to things. There are like six or ten. It has a ton of complex plots and subplots that weave into each other, right? The comics have this, uh, less so the TV shows, but still somewhat there. Um, you know, the movie had some inkling of that, but it looks like the next one might have more. The point is that, like, there's more than two sides. It's not a fucking binary. You can find your team, you can find who you like, and you can say, hey, yeah, they have the right idea. And you might not make that choice automatically to Sonic. Which is good. Like, the fact that there's enough variety and the fact that enough nuance is admitted to exist makes Sonic an infinitely better ethical choice. If you want to get into a philosophical discussion, you would do much better using Sonic as a basis than Star Wars. Which is funny because one is lauded 
one people constantly reference philosophically and one people basically only reference if they're going to make memes. Right? And I'm not going to talk too much about Sonic. That's not the point of this thing. I just wanted a counterexample. You know, I, I could probably go on for like literally days about the philosophy in the Sonic franchise. And that's probably fodder for future vlogs. I don't fucking know. Or fodder for a higher quality video. I don't fucking know. But the point is that like Star Wars, it wants you to believe these binaries because it wants you to buy into a side so that you buy their merch. That's it. That's all. They don't actually believe this shit. They don't have to, like, live with the consequences of people who believe in this shit. Which mostly means, like, for the vast majority I've, I've interacted with, um, doing very little at all. Because their morality system is so fucking untenable and stagnating. You're gonna tell me not to get angry? You're going to tell me not to be afraid, not to hate. Star Wars is literally preaching against like 70% of movies that come out. Right? No revenge, no uh, hatred-driven road trips across America to deal with the guy who fucked you over. No bitterness, no resentment, no... <sighs> No depression. You just need to feel nothing and be basically an emotionless husk. That's how you beat Star Warsism, right? Then you're a good guy. You're one of the Jedi's. <laughs> I'm gonna read some of the comments and reply to this post. Uh, imagine thinking an absolute. Imagine thinking thinking an absolute makes one immoral. Murder is bad. OMG, that's Sith talk. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And murder is bad. Um, that was, by the way, uh, Dave Mage six, David Mage 67. Um, Doom's Dave Productions, another Dave, says, Just part of what led to the fall of the Jedi. They became more and more dogmatic, especially as they became more and more involved in the affairs of the state. Um, <laughs> uh, factual Sorecast says, um, if the Jedi would have let Anakin process his emotions rather than let Palpatine manipulate them, Star Wars would have been over after one movie and the world would be a better place. Yes, that's true. That's just true, right? Uh, LLC Anarchy says the Jedi Order was pretty fucked up, honestly. Taking kids from their families, making them repress all emotion by telling them that their feelings made them evil. No wonder so many of them fell to the dark side. <laughs> Accurate. Jose Gallison says, which is key to understanding the true narrative of Star Wars and how the Jedi and Sith were both shitbags that in essence caused their own problems, Anakin's downfall. Essentially, both factions are great examples of horseshoe theory. Yes. <laughs> and and Christ, uh, Christian Gruber says, Also, what is this there is no try? Talk about manipulative brinksmanship. You do try and then you learn and try differently. But Star Wars is fucked. Star Wars sucks so much ass if you start to really think about it. It's like gaslighting yourself for, you know, hours and hours to sit through that franchise. Days, months, weeks. Especially if you slog through all the fucking kids' cartoons, including the new one that they made. Ooh, we needed more Star Wars, but cartoon. That makes it make more sense. That fleshes out the plot. We'll make it a cartoon. I'm 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 way too angry about this, you know. I'm way too angry about this. But fuck Star Wars and fuck Yoda especially. And fuck all these 
Jedi who treat him like a moral authority. Like, <laughs> like there's one path to heaven and you have to go through Yoda. Or, or, or you won't learn the, the Jedi end of the Force appropriately. Nah, that's not how it works. That's not how anything works. You don't find the one person who understands and then go through them. That's not how anything in reality works. And it's basically begging for a life of stagnation while you're waiting for your Yoda to appear and teach you to lift some rocks. There is no Yoda. You don't have a Yoda. There is no Yoda. You have to do it yourself. You know? You have to try. You have to fight through your fear and your anger and your hatred. And you have to push through to the other side with enough strength left over to win. That's how you win. But they don't want you to think like this, the Star Wars people. They don't care. It doesn't matter to them. What matters to them is that you're buying their merch. You know? You can have your binary stupid posters on your wall. You can have all this bullshit. It doesn't matter if it fucks up your life. It doesn't matter if it causes you long-term emotional damage to follow these pieces of advice. Just do it. That's what I like about Sonic, is that most of his advice is really sound. You know, nothing starts till you take action. You know, if you have time to worry, then run. Those were in the bad game. There's so much more, too. And people go with Star Wars by, like, default. Because it's a big enough franchise that if you say you don't like Star Wars, you're an apostate to the cult. Well... Consider me an apostate. Because fuck any religion that behaves this way. Any of them. Including the Jedi. And the Sith. Like, it's one of those situations where you're looking at the two binaries. They're even literally red and blue. <laughs> like fucking politics. You know? You're looking at this binary. It's not a binary. It never was. Red and blue are both wrong. And I am not apologizing for saying that, hey, fuck Yoda and fuck Star Wars. Anyway, this is brought to you by Opsec Drip. Link is right there. 240 glorious pixels of Shemogborn Libertarian uh, news action. Feel free to listen to that on your break. It's like 60 seconds around there. Um, and feel free to let him know that his money went to something good by hitting subscribe, maybe liking a few things. Mine is there. Out. Smash the state.